We have this from the Post Millennial. Special counsel David Weiss expected to deliver Hunter Biden indictment by September 29th. Weiss said Hunter Biden faces firearm related charges as well as two counts of tax fraud. Now, I, I wonder about these stories because, of course, we want accountability for corrupt individuals. We know that Joe Biden was involved. This could be a first step that leads to an impeachment of Joe Biden. But I kind of feel like they are going to find a way to give this dude a slap on the wrist. Right. So you, you got a couple stories. One, right now you got January Sixers being given these harsh penalties, years in prison, decades in prison. And Enrique Tario wasn't even there. And then you get stories like this. Denver to pay four point seven million dollars to settle claims that targeted George Floyd protesters. <laughs> so it's absolutely fascinating. It's insane. Yeah. The, the left goes out in riots across the country. Thirty plus dead and multiple jurisdictions are paying them. I think the total so far was like one hundred million dollars. So we may be seeing the charges of Hunter Biden. But as you were just mentioning, yeah, where's Kevin McCarthy? Where are the Republicans? Where is he at? Where's Kevin McCarthy? McCarthy? They never, they never do anything. It's, it is the most frustrating part of it, right? When you, when you pay that close attention and you're wondering why is it that it seems like they're constantly like Democrats, the left, they, they make territory. They get good territory all the time. They're always able to do that. But for some reason, the Republicans never do it because the Republicans are just Democrats going the speed limit, if not slower, because they don't actually want to make any changes. And the, the Republican mm. Party is divided. If you if you look at the Democrats, even listen, some of them probably don't like Joe Biden, but they but you will never know. They're not going to speak out against Joe. They're all going to they're all going to be on a, they're all going to act like they're on the same page. You know, Joe Biden's a good president. Now, here you got the Republicans divided. You got this, you got you got half of them attacking Trump, half of them saying let's let's uh let's uh stand behind Trump when we need all of them to be standing behind and, and even when Trump was even when Trump was the president, the Republican party was divided, yeah. you know? Yep. Was there was there numbers on the amount? I think we covered this at some point right there were there was numbers on the amount of people that said if they had known about the hunter biden laptop scandal before the election it's like seven to eight percent seven to eight percent like i was talking to some recently so they don't even think that they, they think that the republicans or them going after hunter biden's a losing plan anyways like they, they don't feel like it actually moves the needle enough to, enough to make it worth it other than if you're actually acting on principle and doing well, it because you actually want to right prosecute somebody that's committing a crime i don't completely disagree you know? i think that Going after Hunter Biden is not necessarily an election issue. It's an mm. accountability issue, but it does lead to the business dealings of Joe Biden, yeah. who is now it's being reported using what aliases to communicate with Hunter to give him private information because he was using Hunter as a proxy to conduct a business while as VP. And this is this is this is part of the news that's, that's coming out, which could be the Hunter Biden indictments could be the lead up to the impeachment of Joe Biden. It'll give them more authority. We'll see what happens. I, 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 I really don't want to give the Republicans the benefit of the doubt. I don't believe they'll do things. Part of me says maybe they're going to slow roll it until the election year. You'd rather have an October surprise than a year early October announcement. That's not a surprise yeah. for anybody. You give them a year in advance to deal with. And that's an attorney uh, eternity in an election. You want to come out with the damaging information right as early voting starts. Then people don't vote and have an impact. Yeah. So maybe that's when they try and do it. I don't know. Will it even matter anyways? Because the media will just suppress it. <laughs> but but the, but we are the media, right? And yeah, so looking exactly. looking at CNN's ratings in the trash can, and now Fox News's ratings are in the trash can. It's actually going to be the likes of uh, Joe Rogan, Russell Brand, Patrick Bet David, Tim Cast IRL, Jimmy Dore. More and more people are consuming information through these platforms, which is exactly why, for instance, Bud Light sees a massive derailing of their of their stock value. Look, our our. Our, the younger generation grew up consuming media in this way. I don't think any show ever reaches the level of Tucker Carlson. Back, you know, uh, 10, 20 years ago, you had very few channels. So everybody watched very similar things. There's, there's, there's pros and there's cons to that. The benefit is that most people, uh, or I should say there, there's, there is a benefit in people being on the same page in terms of facts, if the facts being given, uh, given out are correct. But then you end up with mil uh, intelligence agency influence and lies and then everyone believes lies. The internet allows people to challenge the machine, fact check, prove it, provide evidence, check sources. Now, the, the, there's, there's a net negative in that sense that, you know, like a show like this, like Tucker Carlson was getting three to five million every night. Yeah. I don't think anyone ever gets that big ever again, <clears throat> right? We get like a 10th of that. <clears throat> to, and, and to be fair, the majority <clears throat> of those, those viewers are older. 
because they were used to watching this, these, these older networks. Mm -hmm. But now that you have a diversified group of citizens getting, you know, different, like this, the correct information, but from different perspectives, like all the podcasts I mentioned, it's hard to break that. It's hard to lie to a group of people that have all these different sources because you can't mockingbird this. It's easy when you got four, four networks and the CIA or the FBI or whatever, they say, look, for national security reasons, don't report this story. And they all agree. When it came to the NSA files, the um, this was the Snowden stuff. You have, uh, oh, no, no, it's, I, I think the, the uh, there's a bunch of different whistleblower examples. And you have, um, what movie was it? I think the Julian Assange one. These news outlets are like, what do we do with these releases? We have to be careful. Let's ask the U.S. government about it. That don't matter anymore. Because now if intelligence agencies want to try and pull a mockingbird, good luck reaching out to 10,000 podcasts. You well, can't what, do it. What they'll do, the next yeah. generation of Mockingbird is they'll deep fake someone that's respected like Patrick Bet David. They'll deep fake him saying something that isn't true. So the, it's like a reverse Mockingbird. Well, Instead of trying to give you the false information, they're going to trick you into believing it. They'll try and- And then it'll look, also defame- they, 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 they can't do that. Bet David. They can try and defame someone like, you know, any one of these podcast hosts. But Patrick Bet David's audience trusts him. They know him. He'll come out and say, that's not true, guys. And people are going to believe him. They could try to create a fake channel where they come out with a with a- Pro, like a prop personality, but they're not going to get enough reach. What they could do is they can go to the parent platform. Let's say there's a large social network called like your your uh, your TV. Place. Oh, your TV. Okay. Your TV. <laughs> and on your TV, they create rules that defy logic, that go against <laughs> doctors uh, and medical science, but adhere to political instructions. And then they ban anyone who goes against it. That's the best they can do. The only problem is the market will solve for this. Then you're going to end up with, I don't know, there'll be some alternative called like Fumble or something yeah. that will actually shout out to Rumble. Rumble yeah. emerges <laughs> Rumble. and then outright says, not only are you allowed your free speech, but we will create an ad network to support you. And they're getting there. Here's, I'll, I'll give you guys some interesting information. We, the live show is here on YouTube. But we put all our clips and everything on Rumble as if it's any other platform. And we get, on my morning show, I get like 30,000 views on average. I get about 180 to 200, depending on the video on YouTube. And I'm getting about 30,000 on Rumble. Timcast IRL clips actually are rivaled on Rumble. This is the fascinating thing. We might put up a clip on YouTube from this show that gets 200,000. Every so often, we'll have a big clip like that. And then periodically, we'll get 50 to maybe 90. On Rumble, we get 50 to 100,000 views yeah, on these clips. Rumble, yeah. Rumble is stripping away market value from YouTube, and YouTube too stupid to realize it. Yeah, they but are. Good. Yeah, so I have a new podcast. I was called the Terrence K. Williams Podcast. Um, it took me a long time to come up with that name. <laughs> 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 but now, this is embarrassing, but the podcast is new, and <laughs> my... The average video, the average, the the average episode gets five thousand views on YouTube. I posted one. Ep I posted an episode with me and Dean Kane on Rumble. It got a hundred thousand views. I'm like, what in the world? Well, Superman. First, Rumble Rumble's audience are many of the refugees from these platforms. So you will find people who are more into politics. You're going to have a, 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 a that that's there's going to be a huge a market share, a huge advantage there. But with Rumble getting into sports, yo, I was watching a skate video, skateboarding. Listen to this, because most of you probably, I don't care about skateboarding. No, no, no. Pro skateboarders in the private skate park to all of their 16, 17 year old viewers, Rumble Sports on the wall. Mm. And I'm like, that's it. Rumble Sports sounds good. <laughs> yep. Main Rumble Sports, mainstream branding in mainstream pop culture that kids are going to watch. And when they go to Rumble to watch their sports and video games, they got Terrence Williams right there. Yep. You know what Trump does need to do though? <laughs> if he's if we're talking mainstream, he needs to just like wine and dine the ladies from the view. Cause he, <laughs> he really does struggle with, you know, if we're talking like suburban women, he's not the most liked person. He needs to just wine and dine the ladies from the view and really get them to turn around. He's been on, on the view. <laughs> do you think he could? Do you remember no. when he was on the view and no. he was asked to run for president? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Roseanne asked him. Yeah. They used to. It was Whoa. Roseanne and Trump on in the nineties. I mean, there's the stuff people? going yeah, back to were, the nineties yeah. of, of Oprah asking him when he was going to run for president. But I have yeah. to fact check you: yeah. the women on the View, those ladies, 
they are not suburban women. Those are but they, dumb women. Yeah, but they Whoopi speak to dumb, but they speak dumb. to suburban women. <laughs> yeah, they, their their audience is suburban women <laughs> yeah. at home. Oh, the other yeah. day when Joy Behar was like, "It's back," <laughs> I was like, oh, "So cringe." cringe. <laughs> yeah, but Whoopi won't be here. Also, like they're twenty seven. Tw they're in their twenty seventh season, which is insane. But why are they not? Adhering to the writers and actors strike. But are people it. really watching writes, the view? They don't even know what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Are women? Are people really watching the view? They, it, yes, they they affect. You think so? they, yes, I do. I absolutely believe that they affect the suburban female voting demographics big time, because they're not. They're not like the the stats say that men watch YouTube more than women, right? If I remember correctly. YouTube, yeah. So if a woman is watching terrestrial television, she's going to be watching something. She's cleaning during the day. Yeah. She's she's getting her kids uh, lunches ready. She's watching The View and she's seeing a bunch of spewed, you know, deep state propaganda being you know fed back to her and that's the voting block that's going to end up costing you election if you can't swing at least some of the female demographic yeah. i don't think that there's much their, their ratings are way down way 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 down but they're still getting between like 1.8 to 2 million view viewers yeah. but it just it, it cycles through so one so one lady watches it and she goes to her knitting group of of women and they talk about what she talked about in the episode that day and it permeates more naturally right it's not that they all watch it they also when you see that stuff you don't talk about like they get clips clips get posted on social media there's more than just the live numbers that affect how how far someone's reaches on a lot of these platforms so yeah i, I just don't think there's nothing that trump can do to satisfy those no, women not at all there is nothing <laughs> but but yeah but, and, if, and if trump went on their show the whole show yeah. would be a gotcha show but the you need to consider the, too yeah it's not even necessarily about trump convincing them to vote for him it's about the Republicans in general convincing Democrats not to support Joe Biden. Right. So, and it's funny because the Democrats are going to be like, oh, Tim Pool's saying people should not vote. And I'm like, no, I'm saying vote for somebody else. Yeah. Vote, like Joe Biden's not going to give you anything. He's just going to keep doing garbled nonsense. War in Europe. You want World War Three? Vote for Joe Biden. You want a crippled economy? Vote for Joe Biden. I'm not even going to, I, I won't even say this. I'm not going to tell you right now to vote for Trump. I'm going to say don't vote for Biden. You know, if you want social justice, then you vote for uh, Cornell West, right? He's your he's your leftist progressive guy. You want uh, the establishment to get a stake through its vampiric heart? Uh, you vote for Donald Trump, and that's not even a guarantee it actually happens. But it's the best shot you've got. Do you think Vivek is just too young, too new to actually have a chance at winning the presidency? Yes, it's it's winning the presidency is more than just being like playing the game properly. The the, the reality to Vivek is that it's he, he would need to to make every perfect step, which he is doing with very few mistakes. Uh, he would need to make every move perfectly and hit every die roll perfectly. Yeah, he would need the deep state to prop him up. That, no, that's I, what Obama I, had. That's I'm why not, he went I'm from not, obscurity to fame yeah. so fast. I mean, sure, that would help. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he doesn't need there it. are certain things you can do in your campaign that you can do need, right or wrong he needs to roll like three 20s in a row yes that's tough that because no money on that. trump trump has the base trump has a great track record with the economy and with <clears throat> a lot of a lot of issues that he's so famous well yeah, he's he's super he famous but but you look at foreign policy abraham accords you look at uh the, the attempts at peace deals outside of that you look at uh timeline for withdrawal from afghanistan which joe biden screwed up but i mean mostly for americans gas prices were low the economy was great then COVID hit it's hard to blame him just for that because under Biden, you also had COVID. The COVID w went from Trump and through Biden. So they both get hit on that point. Trump could have done things a lot better, but Trump's got a track record people like. Like you were saying, you want to see Trump keep doing these things. You know, he, exactly. he getting rid of the TPP, one of the first things he did, bolstering U.S. manufacturing, bringing auto manufacturing back to the Rust Belt. The attempts to secure our border, far from perfect, but heavy efforts being made. People like these things. The, the, the best numbers of our lives. Jim Cramer said that. Jim Cramer was always wrong with celebrating how great the economy was. So on that alone, I think Donald Trump is beating out Vivek. Vivek has to get lucky. And there's a lot that would have to happen for him to actually win. So you can be the best guy for the job. And I think Vivek in many ways is. But because of the problems we, we face in terms of corruption... Vivek may not be, he may not be the right person. Like he speaks, he speaks well. He, he plays politics very well. He's got great policy ideas. He fleshes them out. He addresses a lot of issues we want to see addressed. But there's, there's that fire that 
I don't know that he actually has that Trump does have because Trump was personally slighted. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't see people rallying behind Vivek. It's know? harder. Yeah, and his name is kind of hard to pronounce too in the beginning. I was like, it's just, everybody it's, gets his name wrong. Yeah, it's a challenge for him. That's not presidential. It's just not. Should change, you know? his, should change his name yeah, to like now Raw what, Lightning. Now, what do y'all think of me? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do y'all think about Ron DeSantis? Nah. If, if Trump is not the nominee, do nope. you think he can beat Joe Biden? Uh, yes, he I do. could beat Joe Biden. I think DeSantis can beat Joe Biden. Do you think he has a better chance in beating Joe Biden? No. Than who? Than Trump. Than no, President no. Trump. Not if it was yeah. on the board, but I feel yeah. like there's so much back behind the yeah. scenes crap against Good. Trump that it's like. Yeah. And th this one really bums me out because a year ago I've said hands down no question, but then we got to watch how DeSantis ran his campaign, yeah. and now I'm just like no. He he. I think DeSantis would could beat Biden because he's he's less unlikable. Yeah. Right. He's just kind of there. Yeah. But Biden is unlikable. His age is a problem. You've got a quarter of Democrats saying they they can't vote for him. He's too old. And then you get Ron DeSantis who would just be there, and I think that should be enough. Yeah. He, he would effectively be Biden to Biden, right? Joe Biden was the corporeal form Democrats asked for. Nobody really wanted to vote for Biden. They just wanted to vote against Trump. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to get a lot of people who would support DeSantis. A lot of people begrudgingly would support DeSantis. And then a lot of people would just blindly be like, hey, it's better than Biden. Yeah. Donald Trump, however, would rally people. He would. Yeah. So I, 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 I think I think DeSantis could have been it. If, if DeSantis ran the campaign that Vivek is running, he would be ahead of Vivek right now. Yeah. Do you think that, because I saw Chuck Todd interview Vivek, I think Vivek's been on, he's been on some of like the leftist ma mass media, mm -hmm. uh, legacy media stuff. Is it because they're attempting to split the party in half for the voters so that the Democrats win? Say that one more time. Why would they would prop Vivek up and just go like, Chuck Todd's really seems to like him and want him no. on his show and interview him. Like, are they just trying to create a division in the Republican there's party? Gonna be a, so there's going to be a nominee. I mean, Ron DeSantis is already doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, they, and, so they don't need to use uh, the... Vivek for see his name I can't even pronounce his damn name but but, but, but Viv yeah Vivek is more is more likely I told this to him I was like I don't think you're gonna win and I think you know you're not gonna win right like n no one as smart as that guy joins this race being like I can beat Trump no you can't you yeah. cannot defeat Donald Trump in this primary so Vivek is playing it masterfully he's supporting Trump while running against him it's I brilliant I would love to see him in Trump's cabinet he right said I would love, love to see him in his cabinet he said he didn't want to be vice president, though, right? He did. He's, right. He told yeah. me that. Yeah, but he has to say that. He, so we'll, we'll it, see. He has to say that because he's running for president. But so, hey, yeah, he just cashed Trump him. Ramaswamy would be a powerful ticket because that really would be because Vivek is playing the game perfectly, but he's not in a presidential position. Yeah. And he's the guy that you don't want. If I'm speaking from the deep state's perspective, who's like afraid they're going to lose their jobs, you don't want Vivek to become the president because he'll fire you. He will terminate your job. So those people are like, yo, we don't. If he's the VP, you will make sure that president stays in power. Oh, you do not dude. Vivek stepping in, ending a bunch of the corruption. It would not be. That you're I'm, all just, corrupt, I'm, I'm just, just imagining saying. it, and I just know it's never going to play like this. But you know, they, Trump gets elected, Vivek is the VP, and then you know they walk into the Oval Office, they sit down. Trump looks up and he goes, "Do it." And then Vivek stands up, buttons his jacket, walks out of the hall, and then makes the phone call, and then they're all fired. That's the thing. If Vivek did serve as vice president, I think it could be a lot more of a a front-facing public role than Pence did. Pence was like behind the scenes, quiet, meek. Yeah, and exactly. Vivek's a loud guy. Like he's, he loves to talk in front of crowds and stuff and he can rally the people. He can explain complicated things technically to the yep. American people. He and can, that, that, and he, and he, he, kind of, he, he would, he would serve as an excellent translator for Trump's weird, like Trump's bingo. like build a wall. And it was like, why? <laughs> he didn't explain the Chinese are running our fentanyl through the Southern border. I thought it was a xenophobic move at first. I thought he hated the Central Americans. I thought he was like, we don't want those people here. And it was Trump's a drug it's the drug cartels running human trafficking if, if that had been the message early on i don't think he would have pissed off all those people i think trump did say that he said they're bringing drugs into our yeah. country but it doesn't you matter because the media doesn't report yeah, on it and they clip it all out anyways yeah, but, but yeah. i don't care about the media yeah. anymore but that's right? what you do is C you find cnn it. is is getting a like they're, they're struggling to reach six-figure audiences but back then it mattered oh no for yeah. sure but today it's now it's just like let the media not report it i don't care anymore we we yeah. put out we put out one clip on, on this channel and it beats CNN's entire primetime ratings in the key demo CNN's getting like 40k they are not influential with young people anymore the it's way that done. the media has changed the definition into what we're doing right now is we are the media is like frogs in a pot like I didn't realize I could sense in 2006 that it was happening and I would say we are the media now just to manifest it and make it happen sooner but like to be in it for 15 years I didn't it's hard to see the change but, but look look but we are it this it's, is it it's, it's actually really really simple to understand how these things happen 
when, when I'm younger, I'm looking at CNN, Fox News, ABC, and I'm looking at all these, they're getting millions of views. And I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. that's crazy. And then me and all my friends are hanging out doing our thing. That thing that we are doing is it. When we're older and these anchors have all retired, we didn't change what we did. We kept doing the same thing. Yeah. So you you just inherit it because you're doing it. It wasn't yeah. that one day there was like a switch was flicked. No, it's just younger people, even today right now with like TikTok and other social media platforms, short form. Uh, YouTube. It's, it's why YouTube is rolling out shorts. We, it, like millennials, watch shows like this. Younger people are consuming shorter clips. Mm. They're, but you know, Which is why they're are investing getting, yeah. in influencers. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.